This video is a demonstration of how to approach the hybrid drawing assignment for applications of AutoCAD. Uh, and the idea here is what do you do with existing drawings if you need to make changes to them? And those existing drawings were done by hand or you have only hard copies. So number one, you take that hard copy and you scan it, which requires a large format scanner. We have a large format scanner in the plot area. It's an older one, which means it's connected to a computer that uses the Windows NT operating system. So it's a little bit um, different than the way scanners would work now, but it does essentially the same thing, which is it passes the drawing over a light. That reflected light creates an image. The image is then saved in some kind of format that is raster-based um, in nature. And the raster-based format is either a grayscale, which is a very large file format, or a black and white, which is a much smaller file format. So the idea here is to bring one of those into AutoCAD. So we're going to do that using the external reference command. If you go to the insert dropdown, in the insert dropdown, you've got DWG reference. You notice that there is also a raster image reference. Either one of those is really going to open up the external reference manager. But I'll pick raster image reference and it'll ask me what I want to do. So I'm going to go and find one. Just in case I happen to have um, some of these images in a folder called Scanned Images. So if we look at the Scanned Image folder. We have a couple of different formats, um, actually three different formats here that AutoCAD can use. And there are more that they can use, but the ones that are here include a JPEG file, an RLC file, which I believe stands for Raster Line CAD file, and then a TIF file. TIF files tend to be the biggest. JPEG kind of is just about as large. They're both um, J uh, grayscale, and then the RLCs are black and white. So I'm going to bring in the um, the TIFF file. When it asks you where to put it, you place it someplace. Zero zero makes sense to me. And since we don't know exactly what scale to make of it just yet, I'm going to stick it in here like so. Now, if we zoom in on it, you'll notice that we've got a number of different uh, things we have to do. One of them is to rotate the drawing. When you rotate a drawing, it's a good idea to rotate it using one of the drawn lines as a reference because the edge of the sheet as it goes through the scanner may well have turned. So what we're looking for here is a line on the drawing that we know was intended to be a horizontal line. Um, this particular example doesn't have too many options along those lines, so let's go over here to the title block. That line from here to there normally would be a horizontal line in the title block, so I'm going to use the rotate command. Rotate the last object brought in. I'll specify my rotation point as 0, 0. But then rather than type in a value like 90, I will type R for reference. Now I'm going to pick two points at the end of this raster image. That point right there. You notice I actually snapped to something, and that's one of the problems with these raster images is sometimes you don't recognize that you have object snaps on. So let's go turn off object snap. Rotate, last object, 0, 0, reference. Now I'm going to just zoom in. Pick a point right down the center of that, zoom back out, and then come out to the other end of the line. The longer the line, the better off you are usually with this. So I'll go to the other end like so. Now when it asks me what the new angle is going to be, I'm going to say I want that angle right there to be 180 degrees. Now, the reason it's 180 degrees is that I wanted that to be horizontal. So now I've got this turned, and uh, using the reference option, that means that the drawing itself is as straight as it's likely to be. We can test that assumption out right here if we want by going and setting up tracking so that it's on. Select that line right there and just see how well it does. And if you have got a tracking line that goes pretty much down the middle of that. Don't forget this was drawn by hand originally, so this hand drawing is going to have some, uh, some errors in it. Next thing we need to do is scale the drawing so that it actually is the size that the building was supposed to be. Here's a case where we have a layout and then there are several details. So the question is, which one do we use for scaling? And in this case, we're going to use the layout because that's the major portion of the drawing. Find a dimension that is as long as possible. If I'm looking at this drawing right here, I've got a 60-foot dimension. That's about as good as I'm going to get. So I'm going to zoom in on that, and then I'm going to use the scale command. Object I'm going to scale is the last thing I brought in, which was this image. So enter. Now the base point on this is going to be 0, comma 0. I'm going to use reference once again. My reference length, I'm going to pick two points. You can see when you zoom in how fuzzy these pencil lines get. I'm going to zoom in once again right to here. Pick that point right there. When it asks me how long to make it, I'm going to type in 60 feet. Unfortunately, when I do that now, I'm going to get an error message. It's going to say an option 
uh, numerical distance second pointer option keyword because I never set my units. So I'm going to cancel, go into the units command, pick architectural as my units, pick OK, go through the process once again. Scale, last object, 0, 0, reference, zoom in, pick that point right there, pick that point right there, which is admittedly an estimate. And the idea here is to um, identify using reference an existing line and then indicate the length it's supposed to be. So I'll type 60 feet. Everything gets black because this whole thing got much, much larger than it was because it was scanned as a drawing, not as a building. Do a zoom extents, and now we can go in and check and see how well we did. If I say what's the distance from here to here, it should come out approximately 60 feet, 60 feet and 7 eighths of an inch. That's as good as it's going to get for right now. So what's the purpose of bringing this in? Well, one is just to have an archive of the drawing. So we could just save this at this point. Say, well, now at least we have it electronically if we never, never need to look at it for evacuation purposes. Fire departments like having these so that they can tell what the buildings look like and what the layout is, and they like them electronically so they can bring them up on a laptop. But what I'm going to do now is take one more step and say what I really want to do is make a change in this drawing. Now I'm going to just pick something to change. And let's say... Well, this is it here. Let's say I want to change this um, area right here. It's got a couple of details, and the detail I want to change is right where that pipe goes through. And what I want to do is to get rid of this portion of the drawing and replace it with something else. What I'm going to do is use an option in AutoCAD called a wipeout. The wipeout is really just a flat surface that blanks out whatever is underneath it. If I type enter after typing wipeout, it asks me for the first point or frames or polyline. The fact that it allows me to use a polyline makes me think it might be helpful to actually draw a polyline in there and then use it. But if I don't want to use a polyline, I can just pick a point, say come over to here, maybe come down to here. Let's say I want to, for some reason, I want to keep that arrowhead in here. So you see I'm being quite selective about what I'm getting rid of. Let's say I want to get rid of that arrowhead, so I'm coming over here. I'm just picking points that surround entirely the area that I want wiped out. I have to be real, real precise, but if you have, there's anything you want to leave behind, you've got to make sure you leave it behind. But we can go back and make some changes to this after the fact. Let's say that arrow is something we want to leave behind. So now we do this. Now, <clears throat> when I am done with this thing, and I just type C for close, you see what the wipeout does is it just blocks out whatever's on top. It requires sometimes some management using a command called draw order. DR is the alias for draw order, and what that does is puts elements that are theoretically at the same level, which in this case, everything is at the uh, Z level of zero, the Z coordinate of zero. But it then kind of manipulates where they fall relative to each other. If we said let's take that and put it all the way in the back, now we can't see it because it's covered up by the image. If you can select it, which you even can, we can redo that. <clears throat> I'm going to do a draw order, the wipeout, all the way in the back. Now we go back to draw order, it asks me to select objects. You see if I roll over where the wipeout edge is, it highlights means I can select it even, I, even though I'm going through the um, scanned image. Say so let's put that in the front. Now it covers everything up. Now there's also under wipeout an option called frames which allows me to turn the frames off which means now I have just a blank spot on here which means I can go ahead and start drawing something else and if I want a different configuration maybe I've got something in here that's flanged Turn my object snaps back on. And make sure I have endpoints set for an object snap. So if I want something here that's flanged, maybe I want to put a feature in here that looks more like that. Maybe it's round, I need to put a few dimensions on it. Indicate the dimension from here to here. Be a good idea if I change my um, annotative scale. So let me set my dimension style to annotative. And one of the things I'll do is find out in the title block, let's scale, this was, yeah, the title block got cut off on this one. All right, well, I'm 
going to just set my annotative scale to something that I think might work. And so I'm looking at about eighth of an inch equals a foot. So come back over to our scanned area. So now if I do a linear dimension from here to here, it's a lot bigger, of course, because I'd want to change it to architectural units as well. So that's set for 80 inches. Put another linear dimension on here. Maybe go from here to here. You can see we got the numbers there. Go into our dimension style. Just quickly go and change to architectural since that's the units that this was drawn in. <clears throat> and then we have to make a little bit of a modification probably, although if I did this drawing accurately, we wouldn't have seen those uh, values like that. So your assignment here is this. You're going to have to scan a drawing using the scan on the outside. Place a wipeout on the drawing to remove some of the existing elements. Replace those existing elements with some um, vector-based elements. And the reason this is called a hybrid assignment is when you're done, you will have a hybrid raster, a scanned image, vector, an AutoCAD drawing, um, drawing.